today I'm taking you along with us to another media event. We're going to Four Seasons at Koalina and we are having a five course dinner at Lahiki Steak. It's a Eo and Kohana rum pairings dinner and I'm looking on my phone to see the description. But it's a five course menu. So we have the cocktail hour at 5 p.m. and then at 6 p.m. is the dinner. I'm gonna show you what we're having for dinner. I started doing vlogs on media events. Let me know what you think of them or how I can be more helpful. Um, usually the media events are showcasing what they have coming up as events and if they have anything new on the menu. Um, for this one, I'm gonna find out more information about the EO and Co. if it's gonna be a quarterly thing and it's open to the public. Everyone can purchase a ticket to this event. It's not just a media event today, it's everyone that purchased tickets for the event. We haven't died, died. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't dined at Lahiki Steak before, but we have um, gone to a few restaurants at the Four Seasons. It's a beautiful location. All right, we're here at Lahiki Steak. And this is the seating area. And we have a view of the pool area here. So it's a uh, grass-fed uh, hot dog on a white uh, sweet roll made with uh, banana rum ketchup and then we have a sugar braised grass fed bao bun with our lehiki uh, Here on the media table. This is Jem. <laughs> Thank you again, everybody, for coming out. This is uh, about several months of uh, talking about it, planning it, making it happen with an amazing team of people. So it's not just me. But uh, definitely, what we wanted to do is not just to have you out for our normal. Lahiki steak experience, but to really showcase what the undertone of the restaurant is all about, which is local. And it's not very often that you have a steakhouse concept that uh, still carries through with that uh, possibility of using as much local as, as, as they can. Uh, right now we're up to about eight uh, local purveyors, farmers, fishermen that we support and we are very, very proud of that. And what we did was, um, from the onset, uh, from I got here before when we were playing around with one of the 87 concepts that we went through, uh, we always uh, took away wine out of the restaurant and substituted it with rum. And I'm not a very big drinker, but I know good product. I know a good story, and I know uh, good people. And that's uh, what I'd say we found with the partners at Luhan Of course, thanks for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. And it's partnerships that make it all happen, right? So the chef stepping outside his uh, normal comfort zone of the menu, and then you know, people like the folks taking the time to come and partake, and then the partnerships like the and stuff that um, focuses on uh, using what we have, right? So for me, ranching has been all in the part of my life, and trying to find some sustainable approach to that was, was tough, right? But agriculture and boy, we just don't have that large economic sometimes, right? But we were talking earlier about how to sort of step out of the box in our little system and try not to be what everybody else is doing and find our niche, right? So. Our focus on the ranch really is about open space management first, and we always say if you know if we do good for the land, it does good for us. And the meat, oddly enough, is our byproduct. Why I think our meat is so phenomenal is that we do such good things on the land that gives us that great byproduct. When we started ranching, we focused on the cattle so much that we were losing track with the land. When we switched it around, it, that's what really made the beef we thought better. And that's really that partnership mentality. We're big on partnerships. Um, you know, we're local and we depend on local. And like the chef said, right, I mean, the success of this is really up to you folks, right, choosing local. 
And it really is betting on ourselves, right? When people ask me, is local really worth the uh, economics? And I say yes, because that's that's just you betting on yourself, right? Doubling down in our own backyard. And I think it's really a hats off to the partnership tonight for putting this together because um, very seldom the ranchers can get out, get off the ranch and get into town. But this is the important part for us, right? Is, is getting the product to the customers and making sure you folks enjoy it so we can go back and do what we do. Just thank you folks, it's an honor to be here and I appreciate you folks coming. Who we are as a company is, we're a farm first. So we grow every bit of sugar cane ourselves. To put that in perspective, there's about one-tenth of a percent of the world's distilleries do that. It's almost none that actually grow their own. It's weird to be in a state winery. It's crazy to be in a state distillery. And we're one of the very, very, very few out there at all. So we're very fortunate um, that Robert and Jason set out on the endeavor to plant everything and make sure that we do it all from grass to glass. The largest part of our entire story revolves around what type of co we grow. Co is a wine word for sugarcane, K-O with the Taha Po over the O, that little line over there, that's called the Taha Po, conveniently. If you look in the corners of this room, you'll see five different varietals of those plants. The Hawaiians, as they traversed the seas and came over here, about 500 years before the Caribbean got sugarcane on Columbus's second voyage to Spaniola, and about 800 years before anybody else got here, they had these canes on their plants. Every bit of sugarcane that we grow is heirloom Hawaiian plants. We went back 7,762 plants from the modern uh, sugarcane plantation era and went to the beginning. So we went straight to the source. So not only do we care about sharing it straight from our source, we went and tried to find them from these ones. We worked with the best ethnobotanists, we worked with the best distillers, we worked with the best of everybody we could, and that's how we ended up at the best hotels, working with the best chefs and the best partners. Um, we've been fortunate to be able to guide our ship that way the entire way. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, Honestly, there's so many stories to tell. I would love for you guys to come up and visit the distillery, but not to get in the way of Chef's Brilliant Food or your fun night. You'll see it in your glass and on your plate the whole night through. So ask any questions that you have, but honestly, I think that's the why you're here. This is called a cojito. It's kind of like a mojito with a twist of Kohana rum. Cheers! <laughs> Thank you. Everything is edible, even the flower. Bon appetit. <laughs> so this one is the first course. This is Hawaii meets bone broth with Kohana rum, flamed onions, Kahumana Farms root vegetables. This is El Presidente and it's going to be paired with our second course. This is the second course and this is the Hawaii meets Carpaccio. Kahumana egg, brioche, and truffle salt. Looks really pretty. This is called Old Fashioned. Ooh, you see the snow? Alright, this is the last meal before dessert. This is a table side carved rib, grass fed beef with Kahumana vegetable pot pie and oxtail rum demi glaze. Looks really good. This is inside the pot pie and it has a lot of good veggies inside.